Hello and in this video we'll be taking a look at the NVIDIA GeForce 8600 GT with a DirectX level of DirectX 10, and VRAM of 512MB of GDDR3 and a TDP of 46 watts. It's a small capable card that can run on most 300 watt power supplies. With stock clocks of 540MHz and memory of 600MHz, we'll be seeing just how well it can perform. The card I'll be using has been overclocked to 650MHz on core and 650MHz on memory, giving us an increased 3D mark score of about 300 points. Nothing too major, but something that should give us an increase of a few FPS here or there. The original price of the card was $159 or £130 in the 12th of February 2007. This is quite a substantial amount considering how weak the card is. Of course, today I picked one up for just 25p, so we'll be finding out how far you can game on a 25p card. Of course, the first thing we have here is GTA 5 running at a smooth 480p. It's the lowest setting it could run on, and realistically we're only getting 15 FPS at the most of times. Still, at least it ran, and realistically, with a bit of tweaking and removing shadows, you may actually be able to get a little bit more FPS to a decent amount. Anything above 24 FPS should be considered playable with this card, because even at the time of its release, it wasn't too powerful. So, as time's progressed, it hasn't treated it too nicely. Of course, the game being run in anything higher than 480p, such as 720p or 1080p, will drive it straight to a crawl. The reason for this being the small amount of VRAM is already too small for the actual game. So even running on these settings, we're already going over the, over the limit by about 200 megabytes. Driving stuff doesn't drop the FPS as much as I'd expect it to, only dropping to around 11 FPS. 9 FPS being the minimum, so realistically, driving and stuff is fine. As we continue on, the um, gunplay and everything seems to work completely fine, and the graphics card really just heats up to its maximum temperature about 58 to 59 degrees. GPUs is pegged around 94 plus percent, but realistically, what else could we expect? It's an old card that costs 25p and it's running the game decently well. Moving on with the benchmark, which I'll just leave running now, we see that it hovers around the 15 FPS mark and realistically we're not moving anywhere from that. If you can consider 15 FPS to be playable, this card is the best card you'll be able to get for 25p, I assure you. Of course, moving on to CSGO, this game, realistically, I'm surprised it ran as well as it did on the settings it did. We could improve performance by switching to DirectX 8 mode and turning off shadows, but in all honesty, it runs completely fine on the lowest settings. For the most part, it ran at higher FPS than this, but the low dips would have caused the average FPS to dip down into the 30s. For the most part, we were hitting 60 FPS in some times, and it's only in some of the recordings that we actually hit, hit a lower FPS. This is probably due to... Um, QuickSync actually using up some of the CPU usage and CSGO being heavily CPU dependent. As you can tell, I'm not really the best at this game, but still, for 25p, if you wanted to just play CSGO in like a little budget build PC, paired with, I don't even know, a shitty Pentium D, you could really just play the game, essentially. It's pretty amazing to see what 25p is doing here. Of course, moving on to Borderlands 2, low settings 720p, we're seeing the game heavily stutter. Of course, this being an example of the VRAM, the limit has been completely gone over. Um, it's completely stuttering, low FPS, um, it really wasn't playable at all in these, and that's on the lowest possible settings. Change the settings to 480p and we're completely under the VRAM threshold and we're straight back to being playable. The game hovers around 30 FPS for the most part, hitting 40s at some points in gameplay. And realistically, the, the temperatures and the actual GPU just haven't changed all that much. As long as you don't mind playing at 480p, it's completely fine. An interesting point with this card is you do actually have S-Video output, so you would be able to out output 480i natively to a CRT TV, meaning ideally if you wanted a little CRT TV build, this could be ideal for you. Realistically though, for 25p, you're getting the best performance that I think I've ever seen possible on such a low, low amount. Even in boss fights such as the one here, the FPS struggles to really dip below, I don't think it dips below 24 at all, which realistically is just showing that the power of this card can do at 480p. So stand definition gaming is completely possible as long as you don't mind hitting a few minimums around 20 FPS and an average of 30, which I consider playable completely.
course now going on to Skyrim. This actually surprised me quite a bit. I decided to start off at 480p on low settings, but we were hitting a very nice 50 FPS average and a minimum of 44 FPS. So we're looking at 480p con conditions, the same as the previous few games, but we haven't quite hit a VRAM limit yet, meaning our performance is hitting what it stood there around about 50 FPS. If the VRAM was slightly larger and maybe clocked slightly higher than I was able to get it to, we could actually see performance like this in most games at HD settings. Unfortunately, due to the root VRAM constraints, we're limited to 480p most of the time. However, I did decide to push Skyrim to 720p, which we'll see in a moment. Of course, 720p here with a few higher settings. As you can tell, the game looks much nicer. These are settings that equate to out the Xbox 360 or PS3 levels, and realistically, it does look rather nice. Um, as we go on, of course, uh, the, the more enemies on screen, the FPS does drip down to the low 20s, but when it's only one or two, it's completely fine at a steady 24, it's mainly rating to 30. So in a, you could stick this in a small office PC and you could expect a decent level of gameplay. Realistically paired with a Core 2 Duo or anything, this won't be bottlenecked at all. And you could qu enjoy quite the, pot, like, quite the enjoyable gaming experience just with 20p, which is outstanding. Now this is a mid-range card from 2007, so I think it's okay to understand that we are going to try out some older games. This is Fable the Lost Chapters, personally one of my favourite games of all time. Playing it here at 720p in high settings, we're seeing a return of about 58 FPS on average, minimums of 53. The best performance we've seen from this card yet. We can push resolutions higher, we can do anything. As soon as we swap to the Anniversary Edition though, low settings 720p, we get an average of 8 FPS, heavy stuttering, and realistically the game actually somewhat looks worse than its predecessor. Well, the non-HD remake, that is. So, of course, the graphics pegged at 100%, and the only way to resolve this stuttering is to lower it down to 1024 by 768 and the game looks absolutely horrendous, and realistically, you may as well just stick with the old one, which shows that you may as well play some older games on this card if you can't stand the low frame rate. Now, of course, trying out Just Cause 2 here, we can see that the game is moderately playable at 14 FPS with low settings at around 1024 by 768 However, dropping down to 480p and thus going under that VRAM limit once again, we're seeing returns about 20 FPS, raising itself to 23 here or there, and ultimately giving us an average FPS around 25. Flying through the air, where actually detail is being streamed at good settings, is around 30 FPS, which is absolutely amazing considering the card. The game itself may not look amazing, but still, it's a good game to play, and realistically, it's completely playable at 30 FPS. Graphics, of course, being pegged at 100% the entire time still, and graphics still hitting 60 degrees. But the game is completely playable, and every feature of it works fine. You could probably get away with maybe turning up the resolution a little bit if you found a way to disable shadows and maybe run a few FPS configs. That would go for the majority of the games here, though, if you could value a few of these special graphical effects over the sake of a few re like an increase in resolution. Don't starve here, a 2D game works absolutely flawlessly. 1080p, normal settings, we're getting completely fine, 60 FPS, 47 minimum, very playable. I couldn't argue with this card being used for 2D gameplay in 2017. It works flawlessly with all games I tried. Half-Life 2, of course, medium at 1080p. I was amazed to see this card struggle. The VRAM, of course, throttling it, of course, and that's causing us to hit an average of 26 and a minimum of 20, which is actually really quite bad considering integrated graphics can play that game better however as soon as we drop this card to medium settings we see a much better increase 44 fps on average and 39 minimum this game would be completely playable on most cards really though and this it just goes to show that older source games will work i thought to give red faction gorilla a try and of course low settings 720p were completely abysmal 18 fps on average minimums of 15. it wasn't too enjoyable it wasn't playable and realistically, I didn't think it would be on any setting. However, as soon as we drop to 480p, that VRAM constraint completely gone again. The game runs absolutely flawlessly at around 26 FPS, and that's amazing for the 20p we paid here. 26 FPS, that works out at let more than, well, it's less than 1p per FPS. But that's, that's quite amazing. 
So of course, as the game continues to run, we see that even explosions at high particles only drop the FPS to around 21, which is n it's it's not that low considering how 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 powerless the card is. It's quite a good card for these games. So I suppose the real question is, do I recommend this card? Well, for the reason of its low purchase price of 20p, the low power consumption, its analog output on both S Video and VGA, and the great performance you get for 20p, I'd have to say I do recommend it. However, it would be worth keeping in mind the noise level, the VRAM constraints, and the modern gamer performance is questionable. The noise level of the card due to the tiny heatsink and fan would lead me to believe that it is it's going to be noisy the majority of the time, even when underclocked, which I have tried. It is a noisy card. However, you could replace it, and you could, in that matter of fact, probably passively cool it if you had a large enough cooler and an enthusiast opinion on the card. However, I recommend it completely for 20p, and I'd say the performance that we've seen in this video reflects that. If you like this kind of video, please do let me know in the comments below, and thank you very much for watching. Good night!